Hi and welcome. Now having your own style is important in photography uh, to separate you from the crowd. Now your style can consist of many facets, how you compose your images, uh, the subject matter, the light, and probably most importantly, how you post process your images. Now in this video, we'll examine a post processing technique using what they call LUTs or lookup tables. Now this will give your images a consistent look and feel. So let's dive straight in. My name's Ken Fisher and this is Live Link Training. And don't forget, if this is your first time with Live Link Training, please visit my website. And if you scoot to the bottom of any page, just Give this link a click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be really helpful. Thank you very much. Let's get on. I suppose a good place to start is to answer the question, well, what is a LUT or a colour lookup table? Now lookup tables are techniques used in the film industry and they map one colour to another to create a certain style for the film. Probably a more common name for this process is colour grading. Now the same technique can be applied in photography to give your photos a unique look. Okay, so let's start with how to use LUTs and then later how to create your own LUTs. Now Photoshop comes with several colour lookup tables installed by default and you simply add them as adjustment layers and they'll remap the colours in the image for you. So let's look at a bit of an example. Here we've got one, a photo I took at the Humber Bridge uh, a few weeks ago and I'd like to stylize it a little bit. So what I can do is, in the adjustments panel here, one of these little doohickeys here is create a new color lookup. Now, if you don't want to go to the adjustments panel, then you can actually find it down at the bottom of the layers panel in your adjustment layers. And here we can see we've got color lookup. Either one of them, if you click on it, it will put a color lookup table actually on your image. So let's have a look at this. If we look in the layers panel now, we can see we've got our normal background layer and we've got the color lookup table. And if I double click that, you'll see in the properties panel that it's all to do with color lookups. Now what we need to do is choose one. So what I'm gonna do is where it says load 3D LUT, if I click that little drop down, you'll see below the line here, these are all ones that Photoshop has installed by default. And you can just go through them and click on them for to apply the effect. And there's some that are really in your face and there's some that are a little bit lighter. So well, let's try the, the horror blue for a start off. And okay, that's all right. And it's a case of just going through and playing with the ones that you think might be useful. So of that Fuji film, there are some that try to reproduce the uh, the film look. Um, oh, a late sunset. Let's have a look at that one. Hmm, actually, yeah, I, I quite like that one. Um, a soft warming. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's all right. And we'll try just a bit of teal orange. Hmm, actually, I quite like that as a look. And like I say, some of the looks are subtle, some are really strong. So if you like the effect, but you think, oh, it's a little bit in my face, then you can go back to the layers panel and you can change the layer opacity. So I'll drop this down to something like, let's say 30 to 40%. And then if I just do a quick on and off, you'll see the effect that that's having. It's just giving it a little bit of pizzazz. Now let's take this one stage further and try and create a unique look that I might like for myself. Okay, so well, let's try another. You can put as many of these adjustment layers on as you can, the color look. So let's try another one. And we'll go for, what can we go for? Well, let's say the edgy amber. I know that's quite a good look, edgy amber. Hmm, quite like that, but it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna just drop the opacity just a little bit. I'll we'll drop it down to say, well, I don't know, maybe 40%, something like that. So yeah, I'm liking the addition that's giving me, or maybe just a little bit more. Okay, yeah, I quite like that. What about another one? 
Okay, we'll add another color lookup table. Uh, this time, let's go for tension green. Oh, yeah, again, I, I am liking that, but it's just a little bit much. So I'm going to go back to my layer and I'm going to drop the opacity on that a little bit. So I'm now getting, yeah, nobody else is going to have this look. And then let's just go for another one. We'll say another and this time let's try the late sunset. Oh wow, yeah, yes I'm liking this. Okay, back to my layers panel and it's a little bit too much so I'm just going to drop the opacity a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I'm, yeah I am really liking that. And on each one you can mix and match and, and change the opacity. And once you've got a number of these together, like I have here now, um, the exact combination of layers, the order and opacity will be unique to you and your style. Now we can save out this combination as your very own LUT. Now this way you can achieve the same look on another photo by simply applying just one LUT. Then one click and you can apply your style to an image. So how do we do that? Well, first off, there's a couple of prerequisites. There are a couple of things that you need to understand. The first one is that the, the background layer must be a background. It must have a padlock on. So if it hasn't, so I'll just get rid of that padlock, then the look will probably not work very well. So if you need to put that back, then what you need to do is to go up to the layer menu and new and background from layer. And that will turn that back to a background again. Now number two, you don't want to use any of these masks or use masks at all in fact because that again will confuse things and your look probably won't work as you expect. Subject to those, we're good to go. So once we've got this set here, then I'm going to go over to the file menu and down to export and down to colour lookup tables. Gives you a choice to put a description in or a title if you want to put a copyright in. Quality 32 is normally pretty good. If you have it too high, it'll take weeks to render. So 32 is normally pretty good. And then whichever format you choose, you can put it down in all the formats if you want. But for this one, I'll just leave it as cube. And then when I click OK, what will happen now is it will take me and ask me where do I want to put this. And it's often useful to have a specific folder for all your colour grading LUTs. And so this one I'll call, well I've got it one that I've called the Humber Bridge, but I'll call it Humber Bridge LUTs and I'll call it 2 so that I can differentiate it because I've already got the one. And then I can click save. And then it will save this out now as it's your own unique colour lookup table. So what I can do is let's get rid of all these now. I'm going to shift click and drag these into the bin and we're back to his original image. Now if I add a colour lookup table and I can now have a look in here and I can load a 3D LUT. So I don't want to add any of these, I just want to load a 3D LUT. And when I do that, it'll take me to the folder that I've, because these are these are sticky, it'll take me back to the folder I was last in. But if it doesn't take you there, then you just need to navigate to where your LUTs are stored. And here I've now got the Humber Bridge LUTs 2 cube. If I click on that and click on load, just in a second, bang, I've got my very own unique look in a colour lookup table. OK, let's try that out on another image. Here I've got one. I'll just open that up and now we'll add our very own customized LUT. So I'll go down and I'll load in the 3D LUT and I've got my Humber Bridge LUTs 2 and then click load and it will now add that LUT and that look to this image as well. So you've got a toning and color grading that matches with the images. Well, that's it for introduction to LUTs. A um, little bit of a recap. 
By creating a using look files, you can create a look for all your photos or just even a series of images that's totally unique. The look could be a part of a more complex post-processing workflow or it could be the one ingredient that makes it your signature look. As you grow more familiar with them, you can create looks that you use for particular types of photos. One for sunny daytime photos, one for pre-sunrise, one for nighttime, etc. So, go get creative and have fun with LUTs. I'll see you in the very next video. Bye for now.